What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build, a place where we firmly believe Han shot first. Okay guys, so check it out, check it out, check it out. It's another laser. That's right, Ortur sent me out the Afuro, probably pronouncing that wrong, I'll put it down here, Laser 2. This is their new model, it's just coming out, and you guys are like, Nick, man, we've seen enough lasers, but here's the difference about this one. I negotiated with them, and I got them to let me give one of these units away to one of you guys. Stick around to the end of the video, and I'll tell you how you can win one of these for freezies, because I love you. Okay, so first we're gonna assemble it and then we're gonna take it through its paces. They've actually asked me to pit it up against the X-Tool D1, uh, which is a 10 watt laser. I told them I really like the D1 and they want me to do it anyway. So to get this assembled, we will take them both through their paces and see what we think. Cool? Cool, baby, cool. All right, it is a little cold in the shop, so I am wearing my Build Dad Build beanie. Check it out, woo! Hats and beanies are not available currently. Let me know if that's a merch item you guys would be interested in. Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, so let's get this guy out of the package. Okay, so already it seems like there's less parts to put together for this, which is good because one of my main complaints about the Laser Master 2 Pro was it took so long to assemble that when I got to the X tool and it was so easy, it kind of, I mean, unless you really want to do that to yourself, you might as well go with something easier. So I like the fact that there's less pieces that need to be assembled. It looks like it's gonna be a pretty easy build. Okay, so this is your front railing. So it looks like we start with one arm on either side and one big screw and one little screw, I just lost my other little screw, on each side. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy, it's gonna go through the front of this and into this arm. And just word to the wise on this, don't tighten these all the way yet. Um, you can get them snug, but you may have to adjust them a little bit. Okay, we're gonna put the other arm on. So we're level. We'll figure it out from there. You guys see that? Okay. So once you have those two in, we're gonna come down here to the end, and this is where you're gonna use the little one. We'll put that guy right in here, tighten her up. And then we're gonna do the other, the same thing on the other side. There's another one right there, right here, next to the stepper motor. And I already made a mistake. <laughs> so you can take this guy out and you got this ground right here that you're gonna put through there first. No big deal. Okay, next we're gonna turn the whole unit around. I like the way the belts are running underneath it. So the back piece is right here. We're gonna take this guy. We're gonna put this on as well. Everything follows the curves of the extrusion, but just keep in mind this, this side goes up. And just like the front, these back ones, the little screws go in the sides. Off we break. Actually, just kind of doing it because it's cold. It's actually going together really quickly. Next up is our gantry. And roll these all the way to the back just so I have access to them. And then the gantry. Let me figure out how this goes. Stepper motor would be going that side. So we're gonna go right here. Drop these on these guys. So they've definitely made some improvements on assembly because especially with the belts. The belts seem to be the big issue that people have. They don't get their belts tight enough or too tight. They're getting skipping and stuff like that. So it's just nice that it comes from the factory with the belts already tightened. Just one less thing for margin of error, I guess. Is that a thing? All right, and then so you're just gonna drop a uh, washer on each one of these and then one of these little, um, one of these little nuts. Dees, oh, see. They told me I had to be family friendly for this video. This one on there. All right. Provided wrench to tighten. Say, solid frame. 
I would say the D1's a little heavier, but I like the fact this is solid. It's, uh, it definitely feels better than having the gantry up higher and having that sway if you, if you elevate this at all. I'm gonna bring this guy down here, I think. Bring this around here. This is gonna come all the way down here. Did I miss something? Oh, I messed up again. Huh. This is gonna take the ground. Learn from my mistakes, kids. Don't, uh, don't, don't go too far ahead. <laughs> I like the ground cables are screwed in though because I have not had an issue, but I've heard people having issues with just lasers in general, not, not just Ortur, but lasers in general with them, um, with the grounds popping off and they can't figure out what's wrong with their laser. So that's kind of nice. And then we are going to um, zip tie this up. All right, this one's a little tougher to get in, uh, just where it is versus, but we'll get it done. And I, for the life of me, cannot find my snips, so we're using a scissors. But if you have snips, use those. Because this is kind of hard to do. Okay, next you've got this cable. Make sure that you keep the little uh, ground prong, whatever you want to call it, prang thing, uh, on this far end. And this is just going to clip in here. And then you get two more zip ties. I actually have one more here. Fancy nippers. Okay, now we're gonna flip this guy over. Let me zoom you in here a little bit so you can see what we're doing. We're gonna secure this guy first. Through here, through here. So many jokes. I have so many jokes that I can't say. Done and nipped. Really bothers me, I can't find my cutters. And then we're just gonna slide on over here. Slide to the left. Can you still see it? Nope, okay, here we go. Right there. This is the separate motor that's on the opposite side from the control panel. And we're just gonna take this guy and plug him in right here. Almost there. <laughs> okay, let's flip this guy over. Okay, so you've got this guy right here and you've got this little, all right, so right here, can you see that? There's a little area to put this thumb screw in. If I can get it in there. This is what it says to do. <laughs> let's take one of these guys out, not out, but up and put the ground on that. So plug this in, put the ground here and screw this back down. All right, so you plug this in here and then you put this under the screw, which I can't hardly get it under there. Actually here, let's put this under here so I'm not just tearing this up, right? And then you're gonna slide this on here, like that, tighten the thumb screw right there. Um, and we're good to go. Now, let's, uh, let's, let's fire this thing up. Okay, let's go over quickly how to focus this thing. So you're gonna fire your laser, Hit your thumb screw, drop it down, lock it in. And then it's gonna be that close. One thing that I've noticed so far is that the Afuro, Afuro, I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, is significantly quieter and the fan only comes on the laser when it's running, as opposed to the X-Tool, which sounds like that all the time. So if that's something that is an issue for you, the Afuro is definitely quieter. Another thing to note, and I'll give Artur my, my thoughts on this as well, is since I've had the LaserMaster 2 Pro set up on this computer, it's recognizing this as a LaserMaster 2 Pro even after I put the settings in for the Afuro. So this unit doesn't need to home. The LaserMaster 2 Pro does need to home. So what it does is it tries to home when there's no limit switches and it'll, it'll kind of grind on you. So you may want to disable or turn off your LaserMaster 2 Pro profile in Lightburn prior to turning this unit on. I'm sure that's something they'll fix in the future. So a whole bunch of materials we'll go through in a second, but they did give it a couple of these like little two millimeter uh, pieces of wood. So we'll just go ahead and run a test run on the Afuro and see, how we, uh, see what we think. 
hot off the presses. Oh, by the way, all laser companies do this, just FYI. They send you a really cheap pair of laser shades. Invest in something better for your eyes, okay? Um, those are better than nothing, but these are much better than those. Like 40 bucks, I'll link them down below. I mean, there's a bunch of different kinds. I like these. What you can tell is when you look through the green, you can still kind of see the beam a little bit. When you look through these, you can't see it at all. So I like the fact that this whole side is, is covered up because you don't get that glare, especially when you're doing tumblers and stuff, it kind of fires out in different directions. And if you're sitting there, it could be kind of getting you from the side and you don't even know it. That is, ooh, well, that's up to now. All right, that looks pretty good. That is, that is 6,000 millimeters per minute at 75% power. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just take one of these guys over to the D1, we'll do the same test, and then we'll get into some other materials. So the X tool does have the crosshairs, which make it a little easier to line up, but you can't take this off. So when you come over here to this guy, when you're, if you take this off, you can see better. The only issue I have with this magnetic, which I really like actually, is that it's so close to the material that you can't take it on and off and the materials underneath it, or you risk touching your material and moving it after the fact. Okay, so same settings with the X-Tool D1. Did use their software for that, but we still went 75% power. They measure in millimeters per second, so that was at 100 millimeters per second. So here's a side by side. Aside from the fact that I can't line up anything, um, they look pretty identical. The, the X-Tool, you can feel a little bit more of a ridge to it. It looks pretty good. You tell me what you think, which one's better? The refer's a little darker, I have to give it that. All right, so now I'm just gonna run some more materials through there and we will check out the results. All right, guys, at the beginning of this video, I told you that I didn't think the Ofuro Laser 2 could compete with the X-Tool D1. And man, was I wrong. The Ofuro here has a little, has a little fight in her. Um, I, am, uh, I am pleasantly surprised with the outcome uh, that we have from both of these machines, actually. But first, I wanted to go over a couple of what I like to call nerd facts or questions that you guys asked me uh, in the live stream when I, was, when I was checking this thing out. One of the first questions was, what is the wattage? The response I got was, the output is between 4.5 and 5.5 watts. So there are two different laser modules. There is the short focus, which is this one, and the long focus, okay? For people that don't understand the difference between the two, the long focus is marginally better at cutting than the short focus. It has been described to me as either slightly or marginally better. Just take that into consideration. Both modules are, have a real luminous power of 4,500 to 5,500 milliwatts. MW is milliwatt, right? Fixed focus, we know that. One of the big questions I get is how big is the, uh, the bed, it is uh, 390 millimeters by 390 millimeters. I think that's like 15.4 inches. Okay, the next question, the biggest question is price. At the time of me making this video, I don't know. They haven't released a price yet. If I know that before this video goes live, I will put it right here. If I don't know it by the time this video goes live, I will put it in the description below. Does it have an offline mode? It does, it, well, it doesn't have an offline controller, I guess is the question. There is a place to plug in an offline controller. It's my understanding that they, it, it will be available. They have not made it yet. The, the one they had was a 12 volt. This one takes a 24 volt, so it should be on the market soon. And is it compatible with rotary? Yes, it is compatible with rotary. It is unclear, like I looked at the pins, I think it will work with the YRR, the one that, com that comes with the Laser Master 2, but I'm not positive. I'm shocked, you guys know that I love me the D1. I really do, I like the way it's constructed, I like the way it looks. I'm surprised at the results, I really am. First I'd like to say the Ofuro Laser 2 is a modular design much like the X-Tool D1, which makes putting it together so much easier. Both of them take about 15 minutes, I would say, to to put together. Maybe 10 if you've done it before. So I'm gonna try to keep this a furrow on this side, D1 on this side when I when I show you results. I'm gonna do kind of like a, a little bit more detail to see kind of how that looked. Uh, this is the furrow, this is the D1. 
Now, if you look at them, they look pretty similar. The Afro, again, is a little darker. Um, I think you could get that same thing with the D1 and adjusting the settings a little bit. The one thing I will say, the D1 is a 10 watt laser, which we will talk about in a minute because I'm kind of surprised at how well the Afro did considering that. But the difference here is that this is smooth. This has texture, same settings. So the D1's burning a little hotter at those same settings. Next, I did a burn on MDF, a furrow, D1. So as you can see, the material is going to make a difference too. Um, I never really burn on MDF, but same settings for both of these. Okay, in time for more nerd facts. Let's see, um, bah, 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 bah. it is a 32-bit motherboard, which is uh, something that uh, I've had several people ask me if it's 32-bit. The stepper motors are NEMA 17. That doesn't mean anything to me, but you guys might, might know. One thing to note is it has two stepper motors on the X-axis, which is gonna give you a little bit more even travel back and forth, whereas the D1 only has one. Yes. I haven't really noticed an issue with it, but that is something I know a lot of people will upgrade their laser and put like an extra stepper motor on it to be more consistent. Out of the box, it does work with laser gerbil, laser gerbil and, uh, and light burn. I did have a couple issues setting it up, but I don't believe it has a profile yet for light burn. It's gonna be different for the Afur than the Laser Master 2 Pro, is you do not need to home this device. The gantry is, is unlocked at all times. So you can really just move it wherever. Uh, I, I know a lot of people are, they, they, they want to they have to home their laser. And if you want to home your laser, then you probably want to look at something more like the Laser Master 2. So it's not have limit switches to tell it where it is in space. So you do have to be mindful of that. And before I would get to the good stuff or the rest of the stuff, I guess, I just want to say thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about the laser, either one of them for that matter, uh, leave it in the comments down below. If you like this video, hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe so you can get more lasery goodness, guys. I also do woodworking and pull out an occasional torch and burn things. It's all sorts of craziness around here. And an extra special thanks goes to my patrons. These guys are the ones that make the magic happen. They're the ones that keep me knee deep in lasers all the time. Especially Stephen Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coates, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Jim Carter, Andy the Viking, and Dwight Smith. Cheers, guys. Back to the craziness, and don't forget to stay till the end of the video to find out how you can enter to win one of these guys yourself. Next stop, we've got Thundercats. Ho! So here is the offer, and here is the D1. Look pretty good, side by side. I'm gonna do an engraving a cut. So here's the fur, same settings, and here is a D1. So we did get a little burning on the, on the D1. I don't know if that's a glue issue or what. Uh, it is plywood, and sometimes you have a problem with a little bit of burning on plywood. But pretty good results, like them. What I didn't expect the fur to be able to do is cut, and man, was I wrong. Right, this is the first surprise for me. This is six millimeter poplar. The D1 can do this, as demonstrated here. This piece that I'm holding in my hand, it's from the Afuro, so it can do it as well. That kind of, uh, that surprised me a bit. And as I was looking at this, just now, um, a little bit more burnout on the back of this from the D1 than the Afuro. Hmm, interesting. This is basswood. This is from the Afuro, I think this was a test, and then this is the D1. But check it out, again, more burnout on the backs of the one from the D1 than the Afuro. So one of the big things that surprised me about the D1 was that, now this is, this basswood is 10 millimeters, okay? But have you ever had basswood in your hand? I mean, it's, it's, it's light, it's, it's, it sounds hollow. Um, and so I was really curious about pine because I had some pine laying around. And um, as you can see from up here, like here, uh, that is cut with the D1. Two passes. Two passes, 10 millimeter material, pretty impressive. This is from the Afuro. Now here's the only difference. Five passes. 
And that was a result that I expected. Actually, I honestly didn't expect their furrow to go all the way through, but we are seeing like where that wattage kind of reaches its limit, right? So it's got to, it, it's going to have to do more passes to get through material this thick. Most people I know don't do, you know, 10 mil material. They're doing like three to six. Okay, so which laser do I like more? I hate this question. The reason I hate this question is because there is a million different possibilities that would make the D1 better for you or the Ofer Laser 2 better for you. Well, let's put it this way. If you want to cut thicker material faster, the D1 would be the way to go, right? But I think some people get it in their head that they have to have that 10 watt laser, which was me too, you know, I wanted the 10 watt, but I don't cut 10 mil material very often. And it, unless you're cutting really small things, it, it's, it's not fast. <laughs> some of the things that it can do or you want it to do, like you need to know its limitations as well. It's a diode laser, it's gonna do diode laser stuff. Another thing you wanna take into consideration is, are you somebody that likes something that just is like plug and play out of the box or are you a tinkerer? The reason I say this, because I know a lot of guys that have like, maybe even an old Laser Master 2, that they have upgraded with, you know, a new laser module, they've added stepper motors, like I said earlier, things like that. If you want to have that ability, then you will look at the Ofuro Laser 2, because it is going to be upgradable that way. Currently, as I understand it, the X-Tool D1 is just that. I don't think you can mount another laser on there that isn't an X tool and things like that. So the answer to your question of which laser is better, you gotta find the better laser for you. I was just discussing in a laser group earlier today on Facebook and, and a very wise man said, there is no perfect laser out there. Every one of them is gonna have something you like, maybe something you don't like, and you just gotta make, you just gotta make a judgment call. And then to top that off, you know what? Six months down the road, another really cool laser is gonna come out. So look at this like buying a TV, right? You know, you're gonna buy what you need now and upgrade later. Okay, contest time. I know you've been waiting for it. Here's what you gotta do. You need to comment, yum, yum, gimme some in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and my Instagram. This contest will run till the end of January. February 1st, I will pick a winner and we'll take it from there. Guys, I really appreciate you hanging out. Thanks for playing. And now I gotta get to work.